No, absolutely, and then we'll just put the PowerPoint up. And then when you're ready, go. Okay, um, so you ready to start? Good. So that was the workshop. I'll just say something. Okay, uh, we're going to start with the board workshop. Uh, we're happy to have Teresa Lawrence here. Uh, she led this process last week, Monday and Tuesday, with a diverse team. Harold and Jared served as, as your reps. Um, this has been an annual process. We did take the year off last year uh, because we're busy with reopening plans, but are happy to have the pro have the team back. Uh, Sue, anything you want to say before Teresa starts? Nothing. I'm glad we're back for the first time and get it going. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Yep, just share the screen. So friends, it's great to be back here again. I did some work with you on a board retreat a year ago. And what we've done these last, I'm sorry, I have my back to you. Um, these last two days, last Monday and Tuesday, um, we had a diverse team, teachers, counselors, principals, central office, Jason, board members here. And the goal really was to hone in on some things that we can get our teeth around this year. Looking to maintain the energy from your strategic plan 2018 to 20, and then really go through a process that would allow us to sink our teeth into something where we thought if we got around this, we can make some improvements. So at your table, you actually have three things. One is a handout, um, kind of in the upper corner, handout of the presentation. The other one will be draft one from our work last week. And then also you have your board goals. I worked with you on those about a year ago, and we'll fold those in now as well. We have about an hour together. I don't want to spend the whole time talking, more so letting you get in, ask questions, and hear from your colleagues who were there. Three big ideas. I'm going to give you an overview of the two days. We're going to review that plan in its first draft form. And then we're going to see how might we connect that with your board goals. What might be all the ways that we can get you, when we reflect on your goals, to be contributing to its support and its promotion? When you look around the room, you'll see all of these posters hanging up. We had hundreds of ideas, lots of work together to really hone in on very strategic focus. So here's our group at the beginning of the day. As you make your way through your plan, you'll see uh, that we were probably 13, 14, 15 people. Uh, we were in here for two days, nice, intimate group. Everyone so very dedicated to the work and committed to the district. I'll give you just a second to read over that. And as you read over that, if you can see if something jumps out with you, just for the benefit of the group, what is strategic planning? What were we doing those two days? What does it do? And I'm open to anything. What is it? What is it? Why would we do it? What might be the benefits of having done it? Set priorities. Set priorities. Absolutely. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Explain the priorities and get buy-in from different levels and different input administrative teachers. Yep. Set priorities. Get varied input from stakeholders. Great. Anybody else? Anything else? All of those things. All of those things. Focus. Dedication of time, energy, and resources, and weighing in from various stakeholder groups. In my opinion, stakeholder engagement and strategic planning, I like to get to the nuts and bolts. I think a strategic plan, less is more. We focused on one goal, two hindrances that, are, that might inhibit us from getting there, get buy-in. We talked about who would weigh in, who could help, who could support us, and have a timeline. We have some actual goals. We deal, stu, do still have one work to do on one of the goals, but you'll notice that there is there are some goals that are identified to people. More importantly, there are actions that any single person across and within the organization can do. Parent, board member, teacher, counselor, bus driver, cafeteria monitor. 
So it certainly lends itself to full in full throttle support. My picture over here, uh, strategic planning, there's a guy on the bike, you can hardly see him, but less is more. We, we could take on so many things to do, and there's a good chance we get very little done. One goal, two challenges that will get us there, and a whole lot of actions that would allow us to do that. Just to recap, a mission statement, it's motivational. It's what you aspire to do and be. A mission statement clearly communicates your primary aim and goals. And core beliefs are your criteria, how you operate. We spent time with your group reviewing yours last week. Your mission statement, we provide educational experiences that maximize each student's ability to achieve as a learner and a community member. We had discussion around those and we said, does that still stand? Is that still true? And absolutely the answer was yes. Your vision, we strive to lead in academic excellence, safety, and community pride. And again, we asked the group, is that the case? And the answer was yes. You have a handful of core beliefs that again, are kind of like your guideposts, how we behave, how we operate, how we, how we will do business. Students come first, communication is key. We treat re each other with respect. We're looking for collaboration, hence the very mixed group of stakeholders with us. We commit to creativity and innovation. We ensure that resources are utilized efficient, effectively and efficiently. We have a good quality curriculum and the instruction must be rigorous. We model integrity and learning and growth requires safe and caring environment. And lastly, we account for our actions. And we used that a couple of times when we were together last week. Question came to the group again, is this what we stand on? Is this what we stand for? And the answer was yes. So in my work, you'll recall when I, when I met with you last, I'm a subject matter expert on the intersection of creative problem solving and project management. And we used the creative problem solving process over two days. We did exactly this. We had everyone vision what they would be hoping for, desiring for in the district. We talked about the challenges between where we currently are and where we'd like to be. We generated a lot of ideas. We developed those ideas so that we thought they were good and sound. And then we looked at acceptance. Who would buy in? Who can be of assistance? And in many cases, we made a timeline. In our work, you would call this as well. Throughout our two days, we used this gentle balance between dynamic, this dynamic balance generating a whole lot of ideas, and then and only then narrowing down on some ideas. And the question that I asked repeatedly to the group, did everybody have a chance to weigh in? Did everybody have an opportunity to have their ideas be heard? Did everyone have an opportunity to vote, to weigh in, to make some selections? And again, the answer was yes. My goal in that process is to have buy-in, is to have consensus around the work. We had some ground rules for divergent thinking, for judgment, go for quantity, build on ideas and seek novelty. And you'll notice on a lot of these posters, there's numbers that are circled. That's because we quantify the ideas that we have. So what we did, a lot of brainstorming. We stood up, we had facilitators here, I had a colleague with me, all ideas on a post-it paper, share them, quantify them, and we did a whole lot of warm up. The first work that we embarked on was brainstorming around all the ways, all the possible ways to assess students in their district on their successes, on their achievements, and their outcomes. Brainstormed that, and then we converged. We had a lot of ideas. This is called hit cluster restating, where everybody got to weigh in on an idea, and if it had a dot on it, it was in play. And then we looked for themes. And what we determined, well, there were multiple ways we could, be, we could be assessing students in this district. Everything from the very bottom, school climate, looking at traditional performance measures, reviewing alumni success, quantified parental interaction. So we had that as our starting point. So when we were thinking about the strategic plan, we could be rooted in the ways in which we could assess students and showcase success. From there, we moved to visioning. And I walked the group for, through many activities, many tools. This was one of them, where we just wanted to think in the most ideal, perfect way and 
location and timing. What would you wish for? What would you hope for? As we were thinking about students in the district. So we did some storyboarding. Everybody answered a handful of questions here. We had one, it would be great if every student felt valued and included. Upper left hand side, current state, upper right, lower right hand side, ideal state. We did a lot of sharing. On the right hand side, we collected all of those statements. And then we did a voting process. We used a tool called card sort so that you could weigh in. What do you think is the most important goal for our district and for our students that connect to our mission and to our goal? We did card sort. We were able to come to the top five goals. We were out in the hallway. We took over a lot of space. And we narrowed down to this goal for your strategic plan. For 2021. It would be great if all students were age appropriate literacy proficient, therefore providing them equal access to all other learning. And we have a little asterisk there because we said not just age, but we know we have students that have diverse challenges. So the goal would be at age or ability, it would be great if all of our students were performing at that level. That's what we honed in on, and that is the crux of your strategic plan for this year. With that goal in mind, we started to generate a lot of what are called creative questions. It would be great if everybody was age appropriate, literacy proficient, and not everybody is. And so we began to ask questions like how to do that? What might be the things that are inhibiting that? So we brainstormed using all of these questions to try to see what's between where we are and where we would like to be. We used another tool called brain writing. So not just brainstorming, but brain, brain writing where you could write your ideas down. You'll see your colleagues on the right. Had some discussion and some selection around it. And we ended up with 19. 19 clusters, 19 ideas that we said, these are the challenges that are inhibiting us from having every student be age appropriate, literacy proficient. We did that same tool again, card sort at the beginning of day two. We can't focus on all 19 of these. We wouldn't get any of them done. So we said, let's pick the top two. But what we wanted to ensure was that everybody had an opportunity to weigh in. So we again did card sort out in the hallway and we honed in on two areas of focus. It would be great if all students were age appropriate, liter literacy proficient, and the two goals that we wanted to hone in on, which is the cornerstone of your strategic plan for next year, which of course builds on work that you've done previously, how to identify and support struggling students, and how to align literacy across content areas. Of all of the challenges your colleagues said we have to, we have to wrestle with if we want students to be on par, these are the two. That number eight and four, you'll notice in just a second, we have some categories and we have some ideas how to do that. Any questions so, so far? The struggling students, what about the kids at the top end of the scale? They could still be struggling if we push them farther. If we could push them farther, that's a great point. And that did come up. How to take care of the child? Yeah, right. And thank you for, for saying that. That did come up in some of our conversations and as, as a brainstorming idea, how to ensure that those top end students are still being pushed by interest and ability as well. So how do I identify and support struggling students? We brainstormed again. You can see our work on the walls. And then we clustered and organized an eight, eight themes, if you will, action steps that we want to take. Collect and utilize data to plan interventions. Utilize methods. Create opportunities to expose students to literacy and access tools. So your colleague looked at ways to do that. These are ways that any teacher, support personnel, could be of assistance. RTI, response to intervention, diagnostic tools, non-biased assessments, and baseline assessment schedule. Have a routine in which you are doing assessments. We can build that in. Utilize methods. Teachers, any teacher, could be doing guided reading, reading, targeted skill instruction, and they could be emphasizing vocabulary. So this is the first opportunity I'll share with you as a board. What's your role in this? I might say every month at a meeting, say, hey, is has anybody done anything like this in the district? 
We want to quantify how many times you hear that somebody is or is not. Create opportunities to expose students to literacy. How about this for an idea? Encourage closed caption TV watching. You can invite parents to do that. You want them to be proficient? We can expose them to literacy. Read signs in the hallways, interactive walks and sidewalks, and access tools, books at homes, tactile resources, level readers. So how to identify and support struggling students? Main number one challenge, four of the eight ideas and thoughts. We can implement a whole child approach and we can deliver instruction in a way that considers students' needs. How would we do that? We looked at things like examining barriers that inhibit us to focus, eye examinations, trauma-informed approach, support mental health, mental health check-ins, avoid taking away play because of academic failure. Any teacher, any principal, any parent, any member of this school-wide community could be asking, could be thinking, could be involved in those. Deliver in a way, instruction in a way that considers the whole student. Lots of conversation came up about flexible scheduling. We start at this time in the morning, we end at this time in the afternoon. What, what are all the ways that we can include students together here? Learning styles, we could embed, it should be one word, embed supports, push in rather than pull out. Push in and model strategies for generalists and content area specialists. Again, it, yeah, I should say embed, like incorporate. Oh, so okay. incorporate embed. supports, okay. yeah. That's my mistake, I have a space in there. I, was like, I know, I saw that too and I'm like, I don't remember an idea with anything to do with sleep. So the goal there was is, is keep, keep students in the class as much as we can and provide supports there. Push in and model. And again, I would encourage you, conversations that we'll have with teachers, counselors, building principals, yourselves, the community, again, we can ask these questions. Are we doing that? Does it make sense? Do we have a checklist to make sure that everybody has had an eye exam? How do, we, how do we want to involve even nurses? Two of the other eight, learn and collaborate and build positive relationships. We need to be holding data meetings. We need to cross that 6-7 border. Understand that all teachers are literacy teachers. Collaborate with other districts, research new science, have team meetings, PD for secondary teacher and teacher observations. Again, you can see that we had hundreds of ideas floating around. These are the ones that your strategic planning team said, we can get behind these. These are good suggestions and ways to do the work. Build positive relationships. We can read with students. We can turn and talk to a partner and we can just continue to also love them up. Um, I just don't want six, seven point. The six, seven, the transition between okay. those those great buckets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Between six and seven. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it's, it's still a, something to work looking at. It's a thing. Is what you're saying. It's a yeah. thing. It's a thing. So here's the thing: what you'll find again when we get to the timeline. Is, is there are some things that we have put time buckets to, but there are also things that anyone, a group, a team, a building, a board can keep asking about. How are we doing with scheduling? How are we doing to better that six, seven transition? So, great to have students reading at age and ability proficiency levels. From within that, how to identify and support struggling students, and eight strategies with ideas generated by the team on how to do that. We had that second goal. Remember, we said we only had two. How do I, this, let me go backwards one second. For my own, did I, yep. This, my friends should say, and we can update this, so we'll put it on the website. This was how to get reading uh, how to teach literacy across the content areas. My apologies, one more thing. We wanted to have students on ability level. We wanted to identify and support them. And what we said after this part of our process was, what we see ourselves doing in the district is continuously collecting and utilizing data to drive focused instruction interventions that considers the whole child. That's what we wanted to get ourselves behind on this task number one. 
how to align literacy across the content area, four big overarching ways in which we can do that. Support with ex external activities, display word walls around the school, incorporate strategies in the classroom and collaborate with peers. Big overarching four strategies, the ways in which the strategic team said we might be able to do that. We could have a competitive spelling contest, we could do library visits, we can have counselor book clubs, we can have digital literacy safety so they're aware of what's out there. We can have plan, planning conning time across departments. We can have teacher peer observation, grade level meetings. We can give time to each department to brainstorm. We could work on word problems, vocabulary games, vocabulary in all classes, background knowledge, word of the day, utilize current events, speak and write and complete sentences, and teach vocabulary day. We also said we could display words around the school, a word wall, sight words in the cafeteria, sight words in the hallway. So who is responsible for implementing a strategic plan? Everyone. Everyone. And so again, what I would encourage is monthly at your meetings, as you're meeting with principals, as Jason uh, is meeting with principals, as administrators meeting with each other, we can be asking ourselves, hey, have we put up any word walls? There were about 13, 14 people that said that would be a good idea. Have we done anything with that? Where is it? And let's report out. How to align literacy across the content area with those four strategies and ideas. We said we would be collaborating with peers to incorporate strategies in and out of the classroom. Again, another fair question to ask anyone in the building working in the district. We talked a little bit about assisters and resistors. Who can help support this work? Who is this rubbing up against? Who do we need to get some buy-in from? And we did that for two of our challenges as well. So as when we, when we were thinking about timelines, processes, we can hold those folks in mind. I will tell you that you have tremendous thought that you've got community support, parental support, a lot of collaborations. As part of resistors, what we have, we, the teachers, newer teachers, teachers that are kind of entrenched in the way in which they do work. It's a fair statement, both of those. And so how might we go about working with them? We talked about the action steps that we would use. What are the critical steps that we need to use if we wanted to push this forward? We talked about the right data points. From your previous plan, you had multiple data points. Uh, lower grade levels, upper grade levels set and talked about them, mold them over. What's realistic? Does this make sense? Does this tell a story? And we made some decisions about the data that would be in your plan. And our little jazz hands at the end, everybody kind of exhausted after two days, still willing to play and do our work together. So that was our process. That was our process. Any questions about the process we used for the two days? And we had two board members that were with us. Actually, we have one, two, one, five people that were here for those two days. So if you have any questions about the process, you certainly can ask me or ask them. And I would certainly open it up to the floor. Any thoughts about the two days? our work together. Can I ask a quick question just because I is non-biased assessments like this is that what they're called? Is that a title for them or are we just saying that we're going to give non I mean it makes it seem like were our assessments previously skewed one way or the other? No, uh, it's a standard code. That's what I was curious. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I, I can see why it was, it's just a standard term. Sure, that's why I just wanted to add. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's fine. I'm just trying to remain conscientious about um, things like cultural capital. If you, if you weren't exposed to it, there was a question on New York State Assessment years ago, and it, it, had, it had the word bagel in there as a question about making sandwiches and whatnot. And for many students, I mean, if you, if you don't live in a community, bagel's not a thing, that question is a bit biased. So that's what we mean by those kinds of questions. Right. Well, it's New York City. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's a that's a silly but profound example of this notion of unbiased assessments. Do we know that students have the vocabulary, the background knowledge, um, culturally sensitive to things that they would know and be exposed to? Any of the other friends that were here? In those days? It's not really a process question, mm -hmm. but more a statement on the actual 
um, group that came together. It was fun to see everybody from the different aspects come together with their own brains and the equation from their own perspectives and all come together over the process to reach a goal. Uh, even though there was plenty of passion uh, remarks and conversation, uh -huh. it, it all led to something that I think everybody, like you said, really behind. Uh, it was pretty cool to see everybody come together on that. Both just fighting around things. Um, nice to see how the developed areas come together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jason, can I ask you a question? And it's not about the process, but it's more about um, the assessments and one of them being the SAT and establishing an SAT team. Um, it just looks like there are schools that are starting to put a lot of stock in ACT as well. Okay, so I mean, well, if that's not the SAT exam, okay, that's the okay. student assistance team. Thank you. Good question. Mm -hmm. It's not the SAT. I just saw it under the assessment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Berg referring to page two of the SAT, it's in a team. So it's, so you have the RTI team, a response to intervention, which deal with you know, with, you know, with academic student assistance can, you know, can encompass more than can, can encompass students emotional needs, mental needs, and things. Okay, not, that's not the test. But you're right. As an aside, they are schools are just starting to get students. away from the SAT more. That's not the scene. They're not even looking at SAT. Right. It, you That's make a good conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a good point. I just made a note, um, so we'll consider the the plan that we'll look at this evening a draft as well as this. And what I'll do is make note on some of these acronyms to spell them out at least the first time, first time on that one. I appreciate that. Anything else? Sharon, any thoughts about today? I was over the moon that with all of these many 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 ideas, you know, as you. People know I was I was nervous that we might the process might take us away from what I view as the most important thing to do right now to get our kids um, reading at level so they can access all other academic areas. Um, and the process worked so beautifully that we did end up where I was hoping we would and keep our focus, you know, in, in that five year plan that we established. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm all in the mood about that. I think um, some, just as you said, this is our first draft mm -hmm. and some fine tuning on terms mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. of those things. So that work will still be all right going. Mm -hmm. um, in answer to Sue's question um, about, well, what about those pop kids? So this focus is part of our strategic plan, but don't you ever worry that we are always addressing all of our learners from our very top, and I'll just give a quick example and answer your question. What about those top mm -hmm. learners? So our, we have an RPI process, 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Um, Alyssa and I work together to have a schedule for every grade level, but there are a certain number of students who are not in need of intervention. They're not tier two or tier three. They really are reading a grade level or above. These students will have 30 minutes a day, five days a week, in enrichment and stretching. In addition, in guided reading, because we have level groups, in every grade level, there is a group for students reading above level. So two times a day, five days a week, our students reading at or above will be enriched and stretched at their level. And then, of course, during the rest of the day, you know, we have heterogeneous groups, too, where all our kids are, are um, accessing print um, equally so where our teachers are supporting students that are below level and then of course we have to know that are above but an hour a day five days a week those kids at or above will be stretched and pushed yeah. that's and and some of that piece that that will be phase six is new to this year and that it's an exclusive built into the schedule 30 minutes a day this year Does that answer Yes, absolutely. That's a question that's often asked by parents. Mm -hmm. Of course. Because we have a tendency to, you know, obviously mm -hmm. in any endeavor of some of the problem maybe or whatever, but um not really the concern for what we because we implemented guided reading um, really now we're going in for a third year, that allows for 30 minutes a day every child is going at their level, whether it's below, at right. or stretching. Five days a week. Yeah. 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 Harold, 
Jason, Lisa, Aaron, anything? Any other feedback? I just was. I just was going to um, reinforce what Jared said about the process. You know, I'm always interested in the outcome as well. I always have been as long as we have been doing this, even, even before we had Chris mm -hmm. but in the process, how we get there is sometimes just as important, maybe sometimes more important than the actual outcome. Because yeah. they want to have the, the as you say, uh, stakeholder buy in. So it's not just the Jason Smith plan mm -hmm. and then Slack plan. It's the last thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not. And I just took a report that Jared has said it. You all went through this process and you got your four goals mm -hmm. last November with, with uh, Tom and Teresa. So we had a chance to weigh in and have a brief encounter and try to later. And, and you know, my idea was not there. You know, so that's fine. But, but we rallied around and the core idea here is idea is not fixed. That's not a context. As you say, mm -hmm. ideas don't have to use people do. So we kind of use that as a cornerstone. And here's the thing. This doesn't mean that work that you've done prior doesn't continue. It doesn't mean that strategic plans that, that have solidified, that have surfaced other work, what we were looking to do is what can we hone in on, what can we get behind, what are some, some, some overarching challenge, what are two tasks that we can get behind, and then honestly let it be, and we'll look at the strategic plan in just a second. But it, not that it's a free fall, lots of people could be doing a lot of things. And I would just encourage the board then to be asking, do we have anybody doing those things? And why would we, that be important? Because people, 13, 15 people spent two days saying, these are the types of things that could be in place if we wanted to be identifying and supporting teachers and finding students that are struggling and if we wanted to ensure that we have literacy things out across the content areas. Two overarching challenges, eight ways, eight objectives in which we could meet that, and the other one, four with some ideas as well. So at this point, if you want, you also have there your draft strategic plan, um, 2021. And if you want, I'll give you just a, some minutes just to kind of sift through that, and then we'll go through it together. Um, it was also just right behind your PowerPoint presentation. It is a draft, and you know you can read things a million times, so let's just make sure if we see anything that needs to be corrected, let me know. But give that a read over and then we'll have a conversation. Yep. And as we make our way through, if you have thoughts or ideas or clarifying questions, let's ask them. And Sharon is doing a great job over here of being a bit of my uh, my editor as we're talking, so she'll take some notes. So don't be don't be worried, don't be offended, or think I'll be offended if there's things that we need to reiterate. We might came together last Monday and Tuesday and wanted to have something in your hands as quickly as possible. I just out of curiosity, sure. when does the data come back in the 2021 assessment to put your data? So we still surprisingly don't have I know it's all late. Yeah. And what we we go. Go. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't That's okay. Maybe okay. I appreciate this question. So, so I was just asking, I mean, I know it always comes in late, you know, when if there's a timeline or what you expect to see the data from the three through eight. Yeah, we don't, we haven't heard, we haven't gotten any indication. We have some a very raw data showing how we get questioned. I question compared to our college um, school district, but we've been, we haven't gotten like, we need 2% of the kids got a pool. Okay. So what we, what we do have um, is a three to eight response percentages of how our students did and I, we talked a little bit about this at our last board meeting, how our students did by question in comparison to our um, region, our Orleans, mm -hmm. Niagara, um, then the region, and then uh, Western New York. And right now, our, again, that data, mm -hmm. will use that um, in September, one of the teacher training days at, at day one, um, we'll bring all of the three to eight math and ELA teachers together 
They'll go question by question. Um, and this is that data analysis. First we analyze it, then we have to make changes. You know, if we're weak in an area, but what you'll see, and I'd be happy to share that, or Jason will share that with you, um, is that our, our students really did outperform almost in every question mm -hmm. our uh, BOCES region, our wider, I forget, it's, I forget how many, or many, yeah. many, many districts, um, Erie 1 and Orleans Niagara, that's it. And then Western New York, which is much wider than that, and our kids were outperforming. And we can attribute that to, as we shared um, at our last meeting, to several factors. And I, I do have to give credit to all of you, to our other administrators, Jason Smith's leadership, that we were in the few districts, I believe only 17% that went to school five days a week. Mm -hmm. um, in the state of New York, 17% did it. So I do know that was um, a significant, had a significant impact on those, on that um, progress. Sure. But I also believe it's the shift, it's the added minutes in direct instruction, it's scope and sequence, it's vertical alignment, it's alignment to sure. uh, the state standards. It's all of those things. And if you remember two years ago when I first came in, we had hoped, I, you know, I said in year one, we could expect like three to five, year two, five to, five to, five to seven percent improvement. We're absolutely exceeding that right now. So we're on track to that five-year plan. Um, our students are reading better. Um, the math scores are tracking with our literacy scores. They are um, almost to that same um, tracking upward momentum. Mm -hmm. And again, all I, all we have are those question by question. Boy, it would be really nice since they only, it was just a Scantron. They had the information within seconds of scanning those test sheets. I don't know why we don't have the data. It doesn't make sense. Because it means they look like they're really working in the school. Yeah. yeah. Writing, it's frustrating. Yeah. Without writing, though, it's hard to explain why certain questions are worth more and certain questions are worth less. With with writing, it's a little bit easier to be ambiguous about sure. the scores. But, but I'll tell you, that data is as clean as it could get. It's multiple choice. Run the Scantron and, and tell us how we did. But unfortunately, we don't have that. I wish um, I did call Office of Assessment. Sure and get to talk to, you know, whoever answers the phone. And uh, there is, there is, yes, you're not, absolutely, I'll wait. Um, there is no release date yet. Okay. They don't have an anticipated release date. I think they're waiting for all to die out because I think, what, as you're saying, our governor was trying to push the thing that we don't need brick and mortar schools. We can go all online and this proves them completely wrong. That's right. And that's why I think this is a drag to this. He's slow playing it out, like he's a slow playing a few other things. It's probably right now. Um, well, I, agree, I agree. The same with no masks. Yeah. So in terms of next steps, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, I got the next steps ready to go. It's at my clock, but um, well, you know, you, you just finish that up. Yeah. What What was really outstanding, and, and uh, for those of you for whom I'm new, I'm a former superintendent of schools. And to watch the conversation, listen to the conversation, you, you have stellar leadership at the teacher level, counseling letter, counseling level, administrative, and certainly Jason. The conversation centers on what are we doing? How do we know we're doing it? Is this the best thing for children? Is this the best schedule that we can have? And for all of these questions, there are, are no easy answers, but you certainly had a group that was willing to turn over those rocks and ask those questions and hone in and, and commit to these. So in the strategic plan, what you have there, as it says, it builds upon your improvement strategies from 18 to 20. And then this plan looks at one single goal and two overarching challenges and ways to address those challenges. That goal, to have all students age appropriately, ability appropriate, literacy proficient. The two challenges, how to identify and support struggling students, how to align literacy across the content, and how will do that is to continuously collect and utilize data to drive focused instruction interventions that consider the whole child. So targeted responses, again, we will edit this to, to spell out acronyms. Eight ways, collect and utilize data to plan interventions. 
Not only will we do it, here are ways in which we can do it. Implement a whole child approach. Not only are we going to do that, here are ways in which we can do that. Utilize methods in the instruction. Deliver instruction in a way that considers students' needs. Learn and collaborate among teachers, faculty, and staff. Create opportunities to expose students to literacy. Assess tools and build positive relationships. What you have down below there, time got away from us, time, energy, and interest there at the end of the days, but we started to look at some specific supporting actions, what has to happen. We've begun to identify who might take the helm as a responsibility, and that timeline largely is this year and in an ongoing fashion. What I'd like you to be noting is A through H, A through H, again, multiple teachers, multiple teams, parents, boards, your community, can take ownership and be doing something to be in support of that. Challenge number two, how to align literacy across the content. And that simply means that the English teacher is not the only person responsible for teaching children how to read and write. The math teacher as a mathematician has responsibility for jargon, for understanding how books are laid out, how to read graphs. We'll collaborate with peers to incorporate strategies in and out of the classroom. There's lots of opportunities for bus drivers, hallway monitors, cafeteria monitors librarians, teachers, parents to be on that. Incorporate strategies in the classroom, first targeted response, and a handful of ways in which teachers, families can do that. Collaborate with peers. I cannot stress enough that your colleagues asked repeatedly and sought the need for time to collaborate, flexible scheduling as priorities. That, friends, is not, those are two very challenging tasks. They see them as inhibitors to the work that they might be able to achieve. Support with external activities, things that can happen outside of the classroom. Display word walls around the school. Simply having children see jargon that they'll be encountering, not only in the classroom. Again, there's some supporting actions, specific things to do that doesn't let anybody off the hook from those A to D ideas. And then again, those performance measurements, We've had some great conversation around what do we need, what is, what is enough for us to have a conversation at the district level. And these are the data points we honed in on. Things in yellow, still getting, they will be added into the plan once we have them. Your mission, your vision, your core beliefs are there, and your colleagues who participated in two days of pretty intensive work to arrive at strategies and ideas. Questions about that? The other thing that you have at your right underneath that as well are your 1920 district board goals. And I would ask you just to read over those. And when we did those goals together, we again talked about your ability to account for commitment to achieving them. And so I would ask, as this plan would become action into your district, what might be the ways in which you as a board and as board members can be supportive of a plan? Any thoughts? I think these supporting actions that are being put into place make the administration report back to mm -hmm. us on how those are still being implemented Either, yeah, like, you know, twice a year or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is, um, in a monthly report from the, uh, Alyssa, Aaron, and Sharon, you have a, you have a report that is a line for a current plan. Well, I would recommend that not only would you be a verbal, you know, mm -hmm. twice a year, and the street said, but also we include some of those commentaries in the and what stuff Steve you're right would give the same ideas. Like you say we have the right attitude that'd be kind of funny you say that whenever. What is that? It's a cute positive attitude. Oh. So you get to name the people that don't have a positive attitude. <laughs> <laughs> It's an easy enough. It's an easy enough document to, you don't to have unions, do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
It's an easy enough document to have at all of your meetings. And as, as being said, it's just, just to ask the question, do we, do we know if anybody is doing any word walls? Do we have any vocabulary that's been posted in the hallways? Are teachers getting into each other's classrooms? To, are, are they? I don't know. But just to ask the question, to keep it on focus. So what I will do is I will be staying in touch with, um, with Sharon and with Jason. Um, we'll do some wordsmithing. We'll do a little bit of editing, but then we'll bring that back to you again as a final document. And what I recommend is that um, we should now the next board meeting. Usually what the board has done is you have approved the plan formally. Sometimes you've done this meeting uh, in between now and then Sharon and Teresa and I will have the final plan for yeah. this. And then what we'll have on the, on the agenda in September to right. formally approve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's just a process piece of support. Does that work? Any other questions for me? To, to Vern's point, Vern, I, I'm a, I agree with you, and we'll make those revisions about the assessments. We'll be very specific to what those assessments are. We're more curious if they're in, you know, and that was all. But we don't need to put the non bias. What we'll do is list the assessments we absolutely use to measure sure. student literacy so that that generic term doesn't need mm -hmm. to be used. Mm -hmm. We'll say, well, what Jason you know, said, it's just that that's what I've uh, already yeah. set standard terms for it. I didn't realize what it was. Because we're going to be much more specific and list the assessments we are actually sure. better to be more specific and less. Sure. Okay. And we'll do that. We'll make sure that um, abbreviations are whatnot are out there. Yep. Right. All right, friends. Thank you so much. Certainly an honor and a privilege to work with you again in your in your mighty fine district and mighty fine valley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.